but you know, coming into it, we're gonna see York Band and Darius Band the first two coming off right there. I mean, Darius, I mean, he, he did get a little bit nerfed in his patch, but I mean, I think overall his kit is just very, very disruptive and very dunkable. So it's really cool seeing Darius because actually. I think last week everyone was playing him, and it was really cool to see all the dunking happening from him. I think the biggest thing uh, we we were talking about me and Gander, or Gander, I, we were talking about deforestation, where Darius would be cutting down trees, and Mapai would be dying each time to the um, axis. So <laughs> really cool to see Darius uh, getting banned out for this one because they know the power and they know the the strength of Darius and Dominion. Yeah, I mean, even on release week, uh, it seemed like in the chat room for Dominic Dominion, a lot of people were on the side of already just going down to the conclusion that Darius is too strong. He needs to be banned out every Dominion match. But there was one match uh, where we did get to catch Darius, and he held up to that assumption that, you know what, his kit just brought so much onto the playstyle of Dominion. Um, of course, you know, earlier Tudos mentioned that Dominion is geared more towards AD casters than rather like traditional right click ADs, and Darius is exactly that. He's an AD caster and he's a bruiser at the same time, uh, has a lot to offer. So we see that band out. Cassadin, of course, very, very popular band in Dominion, and the Warwick being banned out as a last band coming out from Death to Llamas. On Team Champion Smite, the last two bands were Katarina and Jax. Now, I, I haven't really heard much, you know, in terms of bands or picks for Katarina and Dominion. What's your thoughts on that, too? Um, Katarina isn't the strongest champion. She's a situational pick because a team with even a little bit of CC shuts out her biggest attribute, which is her ult. That's basically defined you as a Katarina player is how you play with your ult. And just having to be able to be shut out by any champion, really. Because a lot of champions that are played in Dominion have CC. Uh, it's just, it's a risky. So I guess it's more it was, of a counter pick situation if you know what the other team's playing. So I guess it was just like a, a maybe a pick in that they didn't want to really see because it could be a counter pick for their comp. So Team Champions might with that Katarina pick. I mean, really interesting to see those bands. But we do have picks going on. We have Lysa going to be picking up Wukong, Metapong with Alistair, Ezreal, Urgot, and Luthu being picked up. Oh my gosh, Lulu's support is actually pretty strong in um, Dominion, so that's really cool to see. And then lastly, but not least, Garen and Olaf being picked up right now. What do you see from um, both teams uh, right now, uh, Toodles, just 14 comp wise for either team? Um, right now, looking at Team Purple, we've got Alistar, excellent CC, and uh, Tank. He's actually one of the best champions in the game to hold turrets, so there's a lot of metas where you just leave the tank up top, which is Alistar. Holds it down really well. Azrael is a solid AD carry. Garen is not, not a usual pick, but he's strong. And Olaf is solid in both modes. So far on the blue team, Team OP, besides Mordekaiser. That's what I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wukong, Wukong is bannable, Urgot's bannable. Lulu is always a ban. Mordekaiser, not the strongest pick. Heimerdinger, solid. Yeah, the Heimerdinger is very, very disruptive to turrets, though. I mean, Urgot. If you haven't seen an Urgot before in, in bottom lane, it's really terrible. I mean, even he can kind of rotate the top, but with his um, range plus his uh, corrosive charge with the hyper hyper, hyper position transfer, I cannot say it. <laughs> hyper his position reverser. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hate that ultimate. Tongue twister. It is, it is. Right but um, yeah, with that, I mean, Urgot in general is just really, really strong. Strong cans are not really easily at bottom lane or even that top lane really need be. And yeah, with the Lulu pick with Clitter Lance, I think that's that's always the key to be disruptive. And she is a very disruptive and damagey and can make someone tanky support. So it's really cool to see that um, Lulu pick as well. And then the last pick for uh, Team Champions might will be a uh, Ramus. Of course, Ramus. Um you know, pretty well known even in just pub games for Dominion just purely because of his speed and he gets naturally quite tanky but I think he's not necessarily as favorite as people make out to make out make him out to be there we go make him out to be um, mm. in public games of Dominion compared to a team setting tournament play yeah definitely indeed I mean it's interesting to see I think uh, did you realize Reverie kind of stop the the kind of Ramus play slash uh, I I think, no, that's pretty much it. Ramus and Teemo kind of used Shirley's, not Shirley's Revier, uh, Priscilla's Blessing. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's why I kind of feel bad for uh, Dominion because, uh, like, when it first came out, we had that whole back capping, mm -hmm. like, kit you could get, which just, oh, first of all, back capping, like, it's a legitimate strap, but it's also something that Dominion, it takes away the fun of Dominion, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, to to like to to essentialize on into that like game mode, and uh, first of all, playing OP champion with the Priscilla's was just way too much, and that's what shied a lot of people away from Dominion. Now that that's been banned, it's kind of it's kind of less seen. Backhapping is still seen, as you guys all know. You probably met Pooters or seen his gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still prevalent in uh, the current scene, but it's not as much of a nuisance. Yeah, right definitely not, because, yeah, they, they don't have the extra speed. But, I mean, with Ramus, that kind of was his MO, and now he's kind of okay. I mean, he's tanky. He does uh, provide that um, taunt. But other than that, I don't know if he's going to be the best, like, holder, per se, or initiator. At Ramus, Ramus is super strong. He's almost always bannable in Dominion because of his, his mobility, first of all, the back captain. Yep. And his taunt, which shuts out squishier champions without any cleanse or basically you got to carry cleanse or um, QSS. Uh, QSS, yeah, mm -hmm. to get away from any Ramus because a full taunt will destroy you. If yeah. there's any team involved, or sometimes may not even team involved if you're a carry. <laughs> yeah. he, just, he gets OP really early and mid game, and that's where he really shines. Yep, so Ramus, um, you know, a pickup that definitely just shuts down a, you know, a single target and then also some tower capping uh, capabilities. We are seeing a lot of just revived ghosts coming out from Purple Team. I mean, we talked about this the first match we streamed uh, about how a lot of summoners don't really prefer ghost on top of revive because you put that mastery point in and you get a speed boost as soon as you come up otherwise you're usually you know just kind of hanging around a tower trying to hold off on it it kind of becomes a kite war until one team commits to a full fight so you don't see ghost being you know it ghost it doesn't have as many i guess chances to be utilized just also because the map's so small uh the chases aren't going to be that long compared to summoner's rift it's not like you're going through tons of bushes through like the entire jungle to try to chase someone down but we are seeing that double up on pretty much all of the summoners on purple team and then metapon actually taking ghost and exhaust um to bring up that exhaust for their team on the other team on blue team we see revive exhaust on wukong uh again the same combo on ergot reviving Gary Garrison on Lulu, on, along with Heimerdinger, are also taking Garrison and then revive and ignite for Mordekaiser. Mm. So, I would say, I mean, just based on summoners, like Blue Team, Death Lama seems just ready to be a bit more aggressive. I mean, like, Blue I guess, Team summoner layout is is more team like it's more team play oriented, which is better because they have a Garrison first of all, which is essential. Like to any any high tier gameplay, it's just it brings way too much to the table. It provides too much time, um, and if you look at purple team having revive and ghost, it just that just means they want to go fast, all the time. Right. That's it. Yeah. There's 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 a certain amount of usefulness you need in terms of summoner spells, and having exhaust on at least two champions is the key. Yeah, I would imagine so. We'll we'll see how that turns out. I mean. The purple team does have a lot of mobility right now. Garen has a mini speed buff and then has that ghost. Ramus has, of course, power ball on top of that ghost. Uh, Azrael has arcane shift. And then Olaf can, of course, um, deny any sort of crowd control with his ultimate Ragnarok. But like you mentioned, yeah, just the just the spread outness of the summoner spells for blue team, which is Death to Lamas, uh, they, they made sure that they spread out their summoner spells to bring more to the entire game. So we're going to be loading in here. Um, not too many, not too much to observe here in the loading screen. A couple of skins on General Wukong coming out, Inferno Moore Kaiser, and then Golden Alistar. Haven't seen, haven't seen the Golden Cow in a while, so that would be that be nice to see. But everyone else is using the default skin. Uh, who do you expect? I mean, I know Heimerdinger is pretty much uh, always known as like the bot leader, but is it possible that Lulu's going to be going bot leader, or is she going to stick to the support role but took Garrison just for um, the team settings up top? Personally, my prediction for this is um, Heimerdinger is going to be going bottom. Although there's three champions, actually there's, to be honest, everyone on the top team can play bottom very well. Um, I personally, I think Lou is going to be going top as supportive with Garrison, and Heimerdinger is going to be holding bottom. Then it could always be switched. Mordekaiser could be playing bottom too. Right on. We will see. Alrighty, almost done with the load in here. Yeah, looking like uh, everyone's in really soon. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a disconnect thing. But um, really quickly, do we introduce um, team members as well? or? Uh, not fully. Uh, we just kind of mentioned it here and there, but we can do some official introductions right now. I'll go ahead with the blue team, which is Death to Llama. Uh, actually, I'm going to hold off because it's probably going to switch over to the actual in-game, and I don't want to be cut in the middle of it and scrambling to see who's where. <laughs> 
No problem. Um, again, this is the Domin Dominate Dominion number eight tournament uh, uh, happening right now, and it is going to be Trover LOL with L30, and um, we're just streaming this live for y'all. Hopefully, you can uh, get some uh, more followers into the Facebook, facebook.com slash Dominate Dominion, but I mean, just keep it live and keep it proud, and getting into the game is going to be on. Alright, so blue team once again, this is Death to Llamas. Uh, playing Heimerdinger for Death to Llamas, we have Landum. Uh, Nikes87 is going to be on Mordekaiser. Lysik is going to be on Wukong. And then the last two players, it's going to be Urgot being played by Half Hearted. And Lulu being played by Wymax for Death to Llamas. Who's on the purple team, Bird? Uh, we're going to have Core Wiggles on that. Um, Ramus right here, right here. We have Arizid with the Garen pick. We have Meta Pawn for Alistair. Sarai for the Ezreal. Sarai, Sarai. And we're going to have Verdon, Verdon, probably, for Olaf. We're going to be playing that bottom Olaf. So it's really interesting to see for both teams right now. Which is, Nyak is probably going to go bottom as well. So Mordekaiser versus Olaf. Very um, interesting kind of lane matchup that's usual in Summoner's Rift, but I don't know, for bottom lane of. Uh, the minion is going to be really interesting to see as well. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of talking briefly about it uh, at the last few seconds of Champion Select. Toodles mentioned, you know, anyone on Death Lamas could go bot lane. They, they all have a kit that allows them to hold that bot tower. And we, we did guess in the end probably Heimerdinger, but it looks like it's going to be more Kaiser versus Olaf. We'll see how that turns out. Of course, uh, the good thing about them being all being champions who can take bot is if it turns out the matchup isn't really working out for them or if they just need something else up top. They can switch it up, you know, when they have the perfect window of opportunity to do so. Both teams starting up, of course, Ramis with that ridiculous speed boost, uh, used his ghost, picked up that speed shrine, and also used power balls to get up top here. Caught, you know, almost over half cap on this top tower, but Heimerdinger promptly puts down a turret. Uh, that is, is running quite low, but they haven't taken it out quite yet, so it's putting out quite a bit of damage before it goes down. Garen comes up to try to save Alistair, but Alistair's going to get taken down as first blood. The kill going to Urgot. Urgot running pretty low, but again, Urgot has that range to continue putting out damage and harassment to the other team. Across the tower, Ezra gets taken down immediately. Ramus quite shortly after. The exhaust onto Garen is going to take them out, and they're going to have an easy four-man cap up here in the top tower. Good job by Desalama. It's kind of singling out and focusing down the targets. Kind of like trickled in from Team Champion and Smite. And then also, the Heimer Generator, just that one, really did so much damage to Team Champion and Smite. So, great job by Desalama to do that. But we do see a kind of siege up from Team Champion and Smite with the minions at bottom lane. So, great job by Olaf pushing up that wave. And Mordekaiser, I mean, in general, even in Summer of the he's a pretty slow uh, gainer, so if you can actually, you know, push him up, he can actually um, not, you know, farm up as well. Uh, top lane, again, everyone has kind of regrouped, and, you know, I expected to see this. Urgot just having so much poke uh, ability, you know, kite ability in this top tower can just shoot across the walls, either from the bottom or the top portion of that tower, now putting out a lot of damage onto Ramus. You know, Ramus just barely showed up, almost running down to half health. Garen does aggress straight onto Urgot, but that wasn't the best idea. Garen running below half health. You know, everyone on purple team actually running or close to half health or below. Ramus is the first one to go down. Urgot does get taken down, but Lulu continuing to poke across the wall onto Ezreal, and the kill is going to go to Heimerdinger. Wukong finishes off Garen and Alistar is taught all alone. Double kill going to Wukong. They once again pretty much a 4 0 uh, Urgot did get taken out, but 4 0 uh, the enemy team in the top tower, so they're going to be pretty comfortable up top. Yeah, definitely indeed. I mean, it's looking like King Chance fight. I mean, right now Ramus is up there by himself, kind of, and then um, Ezra kind of came right into it. And they're going to try to catch on the Wildwick. Wildwick's going to take a lot of damage. You're going to use that, spin the wind to try to get some damage onto Wildwick. And we're going to see if he can get down and get the kill. But Wildwick's just kiting in around, using that Glitter to just slow it down, using the help of um, Timer Digger and Wukong. And we're going to see if that damage is going to be enough. Not going to be enough from the ultimate from Garen. And we're going to see if Ramus can catch. But here comes Urga just coming right back at Corvigal. The Corvigal's going to get taken down really easily. Azure is going to get CC'd upon with Lysix ultimate. And we're going to see if he can get away. Going to use that decoy to get away, but he's going to get hugeified with that wild grip and going to be able to get away. Wow, 2 for 0 right there. Great job by Desmondus just kiting that one out. 
Yeah, meanwhile, uh, we saw Sire uh, getting a lot of cap onto this top tower, almost neutralized it, went way half past point, but the garrison came out stopping that, and just so much damage coming out from the tower. Sire actually now going to go down to Ura, despite using Arcane Shift, it was a little bit too late. Uh, the last Acid Hunter did leave before the blink occurred, so now it's just Metapon left alone to try to push this lane out. And half hearted with that Urga pick, plus the turrets all around are going to be really, really hard for Corbogo to actually try to get that sneaky, sneaky cap over at the windmill. And this is really, really great defense from the Salamas right now. So I'm looking at um, some of the builds here as we continue this siege from Purple Team, just trying to see what they can do up top. Uh, Ramus actually picking her Rejuvenation Bead. It looks like, I believe that. Each, uh, you know, just given that he has a cloth armor and a chain vest, is he looking to go for an early random? I think so, but we do have a hyperconnect transition transfer, uh, yeah, but great job by Urgot just getting the damage down. And here comes Death Lama just trying to get in all that AoE, just all the damage coming in onto Alistair and Corvigal. Corvigal is just going to be taken out by the kiting of Half-Hearted. Great job by um, Urgot just getting that... Uh, ultimate in there and taking down the um, team pretty much, just splitting them up with um, Ezreal being in the middle of the uh, Lysicle. Yeah, you know, Urgot showing really, really good uh, split side decision making, got that ultimate. I mean, Ezreal's two shot barrage pretty much hit almost everyone on the enemy team, but they were still able to turn that around. Urgot kited very well. Uh, again, they took, and this time they knew the revives were down, so they took that chance to take this extra point here. So it's a, a four cap to one right now, and Lulu actually doing a really good job of just postponing them, taking back their own point. Puts down the garrison to assist, and Heimerdinger comes with that extra turret. Ramus running so low, is he going to get taken out? Not just yet, but he needs to watch out for Lulu. And Lulu actually turns around to pick up the kill onto Alistar first, and Ramus actually dies pretty much powerballing into Urgon. And it is actually a 5 cap because we do see Mordekaiser and Lysik are going to be taking it down. Actually, Verdin got um, ghosted upon, so sadly for not Olaf being down, uh, helping out the enemy team. And <laughs> this is going to be a 5 for 0. Really quick, uh, we do have the item that's like, happening out really quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, the early random is still being built by um, Ramus right now, but I don't think anything else is really happening for the team. While the um, support build, Aegis Legion, and Mana Manipulator, probably going to go with the Soul Child, is... Um, Layla is a great job being that support, helping up the team and giving that extra mana regen. Uh, Urga in a little bit of trouble, kept trying to kite the enemy team, and Wukong actually comes in so much damage going down onto Alistair. Once again, Urga is living kites into that health room. Meanwhile, Heimerdinger picks up the kill onto Ezra. Urga just still is kiting the enemy team with the juice through the brush, and lives once again with only 110 health. Uh, great, guys. Really quick. Uh, we see Azura is going to be trying to chase onto Night X. Nyx is just going to try to cut down, and then the you know, shield, enough is going to be damaged, is going to be mitigated from that, and is going to be able to ace down. Getting that 5 cap and protecting it pretty well is the team of Desalamas. Once in the 5 cap, 5 cap is still live, and Mordekaiser is running pretty low, but Blue Team has done a pretty good job of keeping the champions fight on the purple side, kind of sieged in their own uh, spawn platform, and they're still struggling to try to find the first point. We see Olaf actually um, just running past the enemy champions, maybe just making a beeline for that top tower, just trying to draw away enemies from their spawn area. But if the game is going to be over pretty much here already, the tickets are going down, and that will be game 493 to 0 in favor of Death Alarm. You know, last week, uh, I, the games are kind of closer this week. Wow, Death of the Llamas is just showing up from work onto Team Champs with Smite today.